Hello, folks. Tonight, I am going after NGC 6820. It's an object I captured last year with my SET, and now I'm trying it with my big refractor, even though I have the reducer still attached to it. And uh, it's one in the one thirty in the morning. I'm, I'm hope I'm still coherent right now. I don't feel sleepy, but you never know if I'm making sense at <laughs> this late or this early, I should say. Uh, the mean readout is 820. It's a little higher than what I would expect, but I think there's some haze out there. But I think the data is still good enough. I'm going to keep it. I'm doing four minute exposures. This is HA so far. And I'm probably going to at least capture. 20 hours on this target um, when I add up all the time for um, the three filters. I'm probably going to do the Hubble palette again, which is what I've been doing a lot lately, and, and certainly while the moon is really bright out there like it is right now. And uh, let's take a look at one raw image. That's what it looks like, and let me show you what five hours of data looks like so far. I stacked it really quick in Deep Sky Stacker. I'll use Pix for my, my final stacking, but that's what it looks like. This is just a stretch. So there's some cool detail going on there and lots of cool nebulosity all around here. Um, now, after five hours, it still looks pretty, pretty noisy, so I'm hoping maybe I'll capture eight hours at least of HA. And now uh, let's take a look at my guiding. I'm almost afraid to look. I haven't looked at it in a while. Guiding is 0.95. Mm. I've seen it better, but uh, hmm. am I still getting round stars? Let's take a look. Oops. Yeah, I think the stars don't look too bad. Oops, what am I doing? How do I zoom in even more? Oh, like I said, it's 1.30. I'm <laughs> forgetting how to do things. Yeah, that's not too bad. All right, you know what? I'm going to let this run the rest of the night, and I'm going to go to bed. So I will see you guys later. Okay, so I captured around, I'd say around 22 hours of data. And I've got over 9 hours of HA, and that's what the HA looks like. I've got about seven hours of oxygen. There's not much oxygen, but you can see the that pillar right there. So at least I got something with oxygen. And let's see sulfur. Sulfur was a little bit stronger than oxygen. I got, got not just the, that outline of the pillar, but I got some other nebulosity going on there. And uh, I didn't have to do much. Well, be, before I made them nonlinear, I did do a, a deconvolution on all of them. The stars seem to match up pretty well this time. And I also did a, a dynamic background extraction and an automatic background extraction on the oxygen, like I always do, just to get it um, even from edge to edge. Let me show you the combines here. So I did two combines. I usually do a bunch of them until I find one I want to work with, but I think two was enough this time. This is my first attempt at a combine. And this involved... Um, I, I, I split the channels, I split red between 50% sulfur and 50% um, HA, and I split green with 50% H, no, 60% HA and 40% oxygen, and blue I put 100% in oxygen. And the way I do this is, I've shown you this script before, if I can find it. And right here, um, you see it says it automatically puts your SI in that channel, your HA in that. This is for the Hubble palette. And right here, I divide it red between uh, sulfur and HA, like that. And then I tried 60 40 in that mix. And I also used HA as my luminance layer. But uh, sometimes you can actually create a luminance layer if you want between all three filters, assign them a percentage, and just change this to screen and click that button. But I've, I, I think I've, I've already shown you this in a previous video. If you want to go back and check, I, I'm sure I, I can't remember off the top of my head which ones I did. 
But uh, that's what I did for that first combine. And I tried to work with this data, and it was too hard. So I went back to what I usually do in case of emergency. I, I did a straight mapping in this one, 100% sulfur in red, 100% in green of HA, and 100% oxygen of blue. And when I have, now this is just me because I'm weird, I like seeing lots of green because I can work with that green. I can start to do iterations like I've shown before in using selective color in Photoshop until I, that green starts to become more blue. And I try and preserve the yellow here and make that gold. And let me show you the iterations I went through, uh, the, the different versions of this object. So this is my first attempt at processing the data, and I was trying to do pics in sight and some manipulation in uh, Photoshop. And okay, this wasn't really going the way I wanted. So the next one, okay, I wanted to get more leaning towards this. And if I could get this a little more blue and this a little more gold, and I cropped it a little bit, and now it's starting to get more blue. You can see there. A little more gold. And is this the last one? No, I think I got one more after this. I definitely more blue here, and I'm liking the gold here. And I think I went one more iteration just to give it a little more pop. Let's, there, like that. Let's look at the previous one. Do you like that one? Or this one? I'll take this one. I like it. And uh, this is what I'm going to stick with. But, you know, me, I always change my mind later. But for now, this is what I'm going to go with. Now, here's what I did last year with my Nexstar Ada C SCT. And, uh, yeah, the one on the left. And um, it doesn't look that bad, really. And I'm sure if I reprocess that data all over again, it would look even better. And so, and the advantage of this SCT is that the focal length was over 1200, where I'm down in the 700 range with this. So this is more of a, looks like more of a wide field shot compared to this one. But uh, I definitely think I, I picked up more detail around the pillars with the SCT version. And this one's only a, about nine hours of data in total, where this one's on the right is, I think, over 22. Um, so what do you think? You know... Every time I go back to look at the SCT version, I'm surprised that it's really not that bad. <laughs> and in this case, I, I I think having more focal length really helped out with this nebula because these objects are so tiny, you need to really get in there with more focal length. So that that's what it looked like. Uh, this is new on the right and old on the left. All right, well, I guess that's all I got. And uh, I don't have any new critters to show you. At the end of this video, it's just the same ones all over again. Uh, rabbits and uh, possums and squirrels. So I didn't include any of that. I'm waiting for something different. If there is anything different that's going to come along, we'll see. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I will see you later.